welcome. I just want to welcome everyone to the Sabbath Day Conference Call. And this is Barbara. I'm serving as your host today. And I hope that you will go to our website for more information about the Creator Sabbath. And that is LunarSabbathDay.com. Um, today you have joined our fellowship group. We have a wonderful circle here of uh, friends and fellowship that we enjoy so much. And we just um, are going to ask others today, how did they find the Sabbath? How did they find the true Sabbath? Uh, maybe you're like me, you grew up in a, a Saturday-keeping church, as I am fourth-generation Seventh-day Adventist, and I guess I'm the black sheep of the family here, and uh, I been came out of the church in 1994, and I found the Lunar Sabbath in uh, 2011. But, uh, you know, we all feel like we're alone. So I thought maybe you would like to hear from other people that have been on the same walk that you're on today. And uh, Sister M is here first, and I hope others will join with their story. Uh, go ahead, Sister M. Okay, well, briefly, how my journey started with the True Sabbath was very um, surprising to me in the way that the Father went about it. I had already come out of Seventh-day Adventist Church and was visiting the Messianic congregations, still keeping the Saturday as Shabbat. While I was at work, um, working on a Friday, um, my coworker, asked me, we were together working uh, in, in a caregiving situation, and she asked me, so are you working tomorrow? And it was a Friday, and I looked at her like, yeah, of course, you know that I go to church on Saturday, so I, I am not working tomorrow. And she said um, something that really took my breath away, and um, it was simply... A comment that she made. She said, I'd keep Sabbath if I knew which calendar to use. And I thought, well, duh, don't you have a calendar? You just look at the the calendar, it's Saturday's the seventh day. And this is what I've always been taught, you know, and I never question whether there's another calendar. And I was about to say that, but then the Ruach HaKodesh, you know, the Spirit of Yah, said, be quiet, just don't even answer. It literally took my breath away. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I, am, I didn't know there was another calendar. And I, I only knew of the calendar we, we have now. And so then I started researching, um, praying about it, and discovered there's so many calendars. There's, there has been so many changes in, in history. So what is the true calendar? And I uh, prayed about it and discovered that there's different ways of keeping um, Sabbath from creation. Um, that there's um, the, the lights, the sun, moon, and stars. But then I discovered there's other groups keeping uh, Sabbath, like on a full moon, as new moon, and it became confusing to me. And um, basically I asked the Father, I am not going to be able to understand this unless you reveal it to me. And I studied for two weeks. I found uh, Barbara's uh, videos online, and I found also Matthew Jansen's uh, videos on the new moon and that um, made total sense to me and the way the father teaches me something new is he, he he teaches me through scripture so I went through the Strong's Concordance on a study on the new moon what is the new moon and then I look at the historical evidence and how his people practiced that specific instruction that I'm I'm learning and um, historically Israel used the lunar solar calendar 
So then it only took about two weeks. I was deep in study, and then I gave my... um, I jumped in. I didn't understand everything, but I jumped in. I was excited, and um, I felt like a little child. I didn't have to understand everything. I just knew that I wanted to obey and trust the Father providing for me. And he has with my job situations. Um, He has really blessed me and given me favor. I've changed to different jobs which have been um, more accommodating for my calendar keeping. So that's how the Father led me to Shabbat, finding his true Shabbat. I remember coming on the call with you, Barbara, and I was in tears because I was so happy to find the true Sabbath. And I felt so connected with the Creator, looking at the at the moon which He made for His appointed times. So thank you. Okay, go ahead, Brother Phil. Okay, um, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I gave my testimony before. I just wanted to say this time again. Uh, when I first found the uh, Lunar Sabbath, uh, it was uh, I was online. I was doing some other studies, and I, I had a um, a subscription that I've from a uh, a young lady. Her name was um, um, Lady Gracie, and uh, I used to follow her. Um, for like a while, and then I did. I noticed I didn't see her in about almost close to like a year. I didn't see any new posts or anything, and um, it was it was uh, you know, in my mind to kind of if I don't see any new posts in a while, you know, much like a year, I would remove the subscription because of probably the person is not doing it anymore. But something told me to don't do it, just leave it. And then lo and behold, about a week later, I saw a post. And I was like, oh, okay, she posted again. So I just started to look at it. And it was on the the reason why she uh, she hasn't been seen for a while and also about the Lunar Sabbath. So I kind of chimed in and, and and took a listen and um, became very interested in what I was hearing. And she gave the website um, for where we are now on the, um, the LSD, the, uh, the Lunar Sabbath Day website. And I went on and I just started reading and watching videos. And it, it, it was very extensive. It covered a lot of areas that I did not even know or that no one was even speaking about, like when the day begins and uh, the, the the calendar. And I, I was like, wow, I'm surprised I never heard of this before. And um, so I kind of just continued studying. And then I went on to um, World Last Chance website and was studying there a little more. And, um, and that's basically how I became knowledgeable about the Lunar Sabbath Day. And um, like so many other people, I, I became the uh, the only one that was actually um, interested in or studying this. And um, But uh, I'm very happy that the Lord had led me to this because it it was um it wasn't even I you know, I studied a lot of things before and it would take me like like a while or you have to do a lot of more research and everything. But everything was very it was very quick. It wasn't hard to grasp or even to accept. It was like the spirit just said, This is what the truth is and just follow and, and it's been that easy. And I've been sharing it um ever since uh a friend of mine um he also is from a messianic background not not a seventh day of his background but uh, like myself but um a messianic background and he basically had questions about well don't the jews keep it and so on and so on and i read into the history that i read and showed him where you know 
in the story about Hillel and uh, the, the second and so and so forth and and he he was blown away and we, we always studied together and everything but he just said one day he called me he said he was going to speak to his wife about it but then one day they both called me on the phone and said we're all in we want to learn more based on the Lunar Sabbath State website and what they read. So I'll just thank Yah for his spirit and guiding and leading and how simple it was. And um, I love studying truth. I have no problem with dropping what I knew before if it is true. <laughs> and, you know, if the new thing that I'm learning is untruthful, I have no problem with that. I'm not attached to anything. Um, if, but if it's God's truth, I'm there. And uh, and that was my testimony. Wow, Brother Phil, that's so awesome that your friends uh, you shared with uh, that were keeping the faith, Messianic group, and they they believed too. It's so wonderful to be able to share and then to have uh, people say, yeah, we believe it too. We're all in. That's really beautiful. That's so rewarding. Hello? Yes, go ahead, Jackie. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Thank yes. you. I'm sorry. I, I was waiting. I, I loved hearing that testimony, and I was waiting, but my children found me. So I may not have to be able to share as much as I wanted to. But I did want to say something. Um, the, the, the last two people said, you know, they kind of heard it, and it just resonated as truth, and they were able to do it. And I'm so pleased to hear that because I've been on this journey for what feels like a long time until I hear somebody else. And how people are catching on now – and when the world's become so full of deception is just beyond my comprehension. So I just thank the Ruach HaKadosh for making it clear to people. Um, it wasn't that clear to me. I went to go on a lot of different paths to finally find this and find where we are. I also did the full moon for a while. I also did the Saturdays for a while. I, I was a Sunday person growing up, and I'm so grateful. And I'm sorry, you can hear my children in the background. But what I did want to really say is that this particular full moon, that's happening right now. It's had a big, I don't know if anyone else witnessed this wherever you are in the world, but it had a big red ring around it. And we call this the red moon and it comes a couple times. It's not that, you know, unrare, but my understanding in my study is that this is a, a, a moon of change. It's a season of change. It's a big super moon. It seems to be a full moon for days. I don't know if you've noticed that. That's how it felt for me. And it's, it's a time of change. And it's, it's um, last year this time, on Yahuwah's calendar, when this moon came at this season, I remember a really big change happening, and I remember knowing a big change was coming because of this moon. And so, for those of you that are newer, or those of you who are still figuring it out, and I trust that I don't, I don't know much, <laughs> but what I do know is that if we keep our eye on the sky, we can know what's coming. Because this year, I saw this moon coming, I felt it coming, and there, bam, something came, and it didn't shock me. It didn't surprise me as much as usual because I felt forewarned. I knew that was going to happen. And um, I just thank the Heavenly Father for these, these, these gifts, for, the, for people saying the words we need to know, for people sharing their testimonies, and for his signs in the sky. There can be 80 million calendars. I don't care. There's only one sun, one moon, a couple of stars with directions, and there's only one king above all kings. So um, I believe that he's given that calendar for everybody to access and those who don't want to look at his calendar don't worry about it we will we will look at his calendar every day hallelujah bless all of you i have to get back to my children shabbat shalom and just keep calm and carry on because it's a tough season everybody hallelujah oh, thank you jackie and we're so glad to hear the children too the children are so important and we're so glad you are here and you're able to share in the Signs in the heavens are never going to change. That's right. And no man can touch that calendar up there. And so it's safe. The Father, the Creator, He put it up there in the heavens where nobody can mess with it. And it's still there. Uh, and uh, we can watch for those signs. And that's wonderful. And uh, we each have a different story on the path that we're in. And the path that the Father chose for us. Uh, Leticia, thank you for coming on. Okay, Leticia and then Ellie. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, good to hear you. 
Hi, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Um, so my journey to learning about the Lunar Sabbath, um, I grew up as a uh, missionary Baptist, and by the time I got to junior high, we had stopped going to church. And so I really didn't know a whole lot about the Bible. Um, then as an adult, I came back to the church, but, I mean, they weren't really teaching us anything about prophecy, about it was just, you know, I guess a feel-good thing, and it was all about the music and, you know, the preacher kind of up there super hooping and hollering, <laughs> that kind of thing. So um, then I started going to non-denominational churches, and once again, it was pretty much about the music. And uh, I got a, I had moved to North Carolina, and I got a flyer in the mail about uh, a prophecy seminar, and I had become very interested in Bible prophecy, end time prophecy, and so I went to the to the seminar, and it was with a Seventh Day Adventist church, and I had you know become convinced that the Sabbath Sabbath was on Saturday, so I joined the Seventh Day Adventist church, thinking, you know, that they had all of this truth and all of this knowledge that I didn't have before. And then I, some years into being a Seventh-day Adventist, I came up, I heard about the Lunar Sabbath, but, and I tried to listen to a couple of studies online and everything, but it just didn't click. You know, it, was, it didn't make sense to me. And I, so I just let that go, and I continued with uh, being, you know, Seventh-day Adventist, and I was a Seventh-day Adventist for about 15, 16 years. And then earlier this year, I saw that um, online, Miss Lady Gracie, her video about um, the Lunar Sabbath and um, a couple of videos after that, she was talking about why she was leaving the Seventh-day Adventist church Um because of this new belief that she found. And when I first, when I saw the first video about the Lunar Sabbath, I was like, oh, Lord, <laughs> here we go about the Lunar Sabbath again. And I was going to just not look at it. And then I was like, well, let me just see what she's talking about. And when I looked at the video, I was like, wow. I mean, it made sense to me where the other studies that I had looked at, it just didn't click to me. So I followed along with her videos, and she, you know, gave you guys a uh, website, and I started watching the websites. I mean, I started watching the videos on you guys' website and following along with my Bible, and I was like, uh, I can't deny this. This is the truth. So, you know. That's when I left the Seventh-day Adventist Church and, you know, started joining with the study with you guys on the Sabbath of the Lunar Sabbath. Ellie is next. Aunt Martin was here, but Martin left. Ellie is next, and then Peggy and Appa, I guess. Um, okay, I'll tell my story. Um, it's very similar to the other lady, only I was raised Catholic. And I was Catholic my whole life. And I was very similar to her where we received a poster in the mail or a postcard, I guess, about a prophecy series. So we went to it. And um, both my husband and I, I was away. I was a, a travel agent. So I was always traveling and going to shows. And when I came home, he kept the flyer. And he said, well, we missed a few days, but why don't we go? And I said, okay. So anyway, we landed up becoming Seventh-day Adventist. We thought we had finally learned the true Sabbath. And I was a Seventh-day Adventist, um, not quite as long as her, probably, I would say maybe five to six years, if that, before I read something in the Bible. And I went to my pastor in the church, and it was to do with the feast. 
And he said, oh, no, 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 we don't keep the feasts anymore. They're done away with. And I says, well, it says here we're to keep them forever. It doesn't say that they're done away with. We keep them forever. And he said, oh, no, no, they were all nailed to the cross when our Lord died. So I sort of forgot about it for a couple of years, but the Lord never left me. He kept nagging at me, and I kept finding things on the feast. Finally, I received a book on the feast, and I read it, and that made perfect sense to me. And it was like he never, it never left me. The Lord kept constantly after me. And so I went back this time. It was another pastor in the Seventh-day Adventist church, and I approached him. And he admitted that he had done the feast. He was an engineer. He had done the feast, and he had left um, the engineer, and he became a, a pastor. But he says, oh, no, we don't do the feast anymore, he says. Um, and I realized that he probably couldn't do the feast when he became a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, so he had to give it up. Otherwise, he would have been shot out of the church. So anyway, but he understood where I was coming from because he had uh, done the feast himself for quite a few years. And anyway, um, so I eventually at that point started to really question. And I knew in my heart um, that the feasts were what we were supposed to be doing, but I had no idea of how to do the feast because I didn't know anybody that did the feast. And then I met somebody in the church by accident one day. Uh, this was after uh, our service, and we have a potluck, and we had a guest there. And the first thing she did when she sat down with me, she looked at me and she said, are you a feast keeper? And I said, what? I was so shocked at her comment because I couldn't believe she was asking me that because she was a Seventh-day Adventist. And I said, what are you talking about? She says, well, I'm a feast keeper. Are you a feast keeper? And I, so I started to tell her, I, I, I think they're, 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 we're supposed to keep the feast, and I believe in the feast. So anyway, I was invited through another friend of hers that she was at the church with um, that um, I was invited to go to a feast. Uh, in the springtime, the Feast of Passover. So I went, and that's when I met you, Barbie, and um, you gave me a bunch <laughs> of things. Yeah, you're laughing. But you gave me a bunch of things on Lunar Sabbath, and I actually had Wanda tell me some things that she was talking to somebody, and I was sitting down one day when Wanda was talking, and I said, this doesn't make any sense. How can you have a Lunar Sabbath when we're, we're going by this calendar? And it just it made no sense. But anyway... I remember you left, you and Ed left early, and you gave me a bunch of papers. And I went home and I studied those papers. And you told me, you said, have a look at these, and if you've got any questions, call me. So when I got home, I basically called you. I think it was probably about a week later. I couldn't believe what I was reading. And um, anyway, you confirmed what I was reading was true, and I went to every Bible verse. I studied every Bible verse that you had given me, and I, for about two months, I studied it, and I couldn't refute it anymore. Then I realized, no, this was the Lunar Sabbath. Excuse me. But it took me another couple of years after that, yeah, quite a few years after that, maybe two or three, before I finally left the church because the Lord told me I needed to get out. And uh, so this is where I am today. That's my story. Well, um the spirit just kept putting on me, you need to give her some literature before you leave, something about the Sabbath, but I don't want to. Okay, I will. I'll go over there, I mean, you know, to her cabin and give her this we, some papers we had put together to give to people, but I didn't know who would be open, but the spirit was like leading that you were open. And so that's why I gave you that package. So I'm so thankful, Ellie. I'm so thankful. Go ahead, Appa or Peggy. Hi, Sister Barb. Um, first, I'd just like to say, Kira, Kira. I'd just like to uh, say uh, thank you for the, the question Q&A for this, because uh, I think it's really important. It definitely is one of the uh, most important for me to hear other people's testimony and how they, they came to the truth. And um, Yeah, so uh, just kind of going back, you know, I had a lot of experiences. A, a lot of them were... Uh, were supernatural uh, um, things not all good either uh, bad when I first came to the faith uh, when I realized the whole controversy between good and evil was real uh, I had evil spirit come over the top of me when I was telling my mom it's all real uh, it was very traumatizing um, and then also too I had you know a supernatural experience where I was explaining this all to my wife because we were both of Catholic uh, well we get married Catholic she was of Catholic faith and 
basically telling her her whole religion was a lie. You know, that was in the difficult that was a difficult thing to do. She thought I was a little bit crazy at first um, when I was sitting down talking to her in the restaurant about this, and my daughter Kira drew um, some, um, you know, basically these Illuminati symbols, you know, because I was in my research, I was kind of just kind of researching all of this controversy on what was going on. And, um, you know, and so a lot of what her picture depicted when she was only not even three years old depicted all these symbols that, you know, I was doing research on. And it was clearly evident that uh, some evil spirit was, you know, working through her to, describe um, a situation with me, and it was threatening me, basically saying, you know, basically it was going to kill my family and me. You know, I had my face and eyes scratched out in one of her uh, pictures that she was drawing while we're eating and a sacrificial um, uh, thing where there was this alien. She kept on saying, this is this is alien, and, you know, and, of course, there's this demonic entity over this little tiny face, you know, which obviously represented children. Um, so it was very it was very traumatizing to me. Uh, in the beginning, uh, but uh, at the same uh, token, I, you know, I got the, the words that stuck in my mind, the sort of that, you know, basically um, after, after, you know, feeling what obviously the evil, you know, that was surrounding me, uh, who wants to feel that or either that or the, the other. So it was an easy, it was kind of an easy choice, you know, it was kind of a scary choice, but at the same token, you know, because all who live in godly will, in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So I just felt like, you know, uh, I, I had to make this choice, and, and um, so as I was going through this whole system, I was I started to see, well, who's who's uh, evil at war with? I needed to figure out what the right Bible was, what the right church was, and I seen there was a big, long-standing controversy between the Catholic Church and the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and so I started doing a bunch of research on the SDA Church. I started reading their writings, uh, Ellen White's writings, um, basically watching videos came to a Mark Clementson video, and um, he had a supernatural experience as well, um, and I thought it was very important, and uh, so, and I started to see the whole Seventh-day Advent and how the attack on the Sabbath day was a critically important uh, doctrine to understand, and um, I wanted to know the principles behind that and what I needed to do to align with all this, and so I started doing my research on the Seventh-day Adventist church, and I was like, you know, and, and not, not all Seventh-day Adventist churches are the same. Um, you know, uh, I heard a lot of bad things about some and a lot of good things about others. And so I decided to go check out my local Seventh-day Adventist church, and he was vetting me as much as I was vetting him. You know, I probably, I don't know if I've already read the Bible, but I read a lot of the Bible by then. Um, I read it, you know, real quickly because I was, you know, when you're in a state of fear like that, you uh, you read really fast, really hard, really attentive. He started to test me to get in, and I was so thankful when I started to hear all his doctrine because a lot of it aligned, obviously it lined with scripture, you know, and what I believed and what I've researched and all that stuff. And so I sat down with him for almost a whole month, you know. I told him about my past, you know, and it probably concerned him a bit that he wanted to make sure it was real. So once it, about a month by, passed by, um, I I was baptized in the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. And, but I was in my walk, and I was so happy that I found the remnant church that I, you know, um, you know, I had a lot of good signs. You know, the very first sermon that he gave, right when I was soaking wet with the baptism, as I turned right to the page that he said, turn to page this and this, and I was right on that page. So it was a supernatural experience. I was, had my Bible open to that, that particular page, and I was like, no way. You know, and, and there it was, and I was like, I'm here. This is it. And then I started telling everybody the story about the, you know, Saturday uh, Sabbath. And I'm not kidding you, just a couple months, about three months later, uh, you know, it, uh, I was telling my uh, cousin about the Sabbath, and this, this flash of thought came into my mind, you know, the moon. I just, it just, like, this word just came into my mind, the moon. It's not based on the moon. I'm like, no way. And then I went to my um, uh, computer, and I did a bunch of research on the the moon and everything like that. And I started building my case on the moon. I was like, is it on the moon? Is it on the moon? And sure enough, um, uh, I started seeing all these articles on the moon. And then I started watching YouTube videos. And, of course, Brother Troy was on there. And I had about 12, uh, you know, uh, one day I had about 12 uh, 
no, no, no. I talked to my pastor and said, hey, uh, uh, something about the moon. And he goes, oh, yeah, uh, some people do uh, worship on the Sabbath day according to the moon. I'm like, really? And so I, so I literally avoided church for about uh, a week or two. And that whole time I was doing research on the moon. I wanted to make sure that I'm not being fooled, you know, because I don't, you know, I've already, because it was, you know, I was already really deep in with the Seventh-day Adventist Church in terms of uh, how much Ellen White writings I actually read. I read a lot of her writings really fast. And uh, because I, I really do believe that she had the spirit of prophecy and it was a remnant at one time. And, um, but then I watched Brother Troy's, uh, uh, it was, well, oh yeah, I was, I was sitting at my computer and I had about 12 slides, uh, pulled up, you know, I'm, I'm doing all this research and all of a sudden I heard this, uh, my computer turned off and I just was walking around and I heard this voice come on. I thought it was a, I thought it was a, you know, basically a spirit talking to me and, uh, I'm like walking around the room and walking behind the couch thinking, oh, this is something, saying something because it was just in between pauses. And then I went to my computer. My computer was off. And then um, I said, it's my computer. And I, I put my head next to it, and I looked at it. And I was like, oh, okay. It's, uh, and then it started coming from my computer again. I'm like, oh. So I felt silly. But I switched back, and I was like, oh, there's nothing on, though. I looked at the front of the screen. I was like, there's nothing on. What's, what's you know, not, And I could still hear it coming out of the speakers. And I started flipping behind all these YouTube videos. I started going on the X, you know, to get out of the window. And finally came up to Brother Troy Miller's window uh, in my in my screen, and um, uh, there he was speaking on the lunar Sabbath and principles around uh, new moon and all these other things, and uh, you know, so he was you know talking about the clock and everything like that, and it just blew my mind, and so. Of course, I I did what I would normally do. I you know did continue my research, and I thought I got to figure this thing out. So I I built a huge case, and I literally grabbed tons of documents that the truth document about uh, you know Seventh Day Adventist Church hiding it, and I just stacked them all in a big binder and got my evidence, and I brought it into my pastor, Pastor Jeff from uh, Seventh Day Adventist Church in uh, um, Wasilla, uh, out in Wasilla, and I brought it a big binder into him. I Stuck it on his desk, and I said, "I'm sorry, I I can't stay in the church anymore." And he's like, "Well, well, how come?" I was like, "Well, because the Sabbath is based off the moon." I go, "And uh, and uh, it's just a luminary calendar, and um, I just can't follow the Seventh Day Adventist Church anymore." Um, and here's why. And uh, I gave him his document. Of course, he gave me a document that the rebuttaled that document that I had, um, but I, I looked at that guy's document and I didn't have to get very far before I knew that there were very, very weak arguments that he was making against that rebuttal of the Seventh-day Adventist Church hiding uh, the calendar, which I thought was, it was was critical. I mean, that's the whole point, right? We, we weigh, weigh everything and I definitely, he's like, I'm not going to get you back, am I? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm sorry. And so I went on this, um, Troy's, uh, I called up Troy and, uh, you know, uh, got, you know, of course his, he, I gave him my email and everything like that. And he, he, uh, he ended up calling me back right away. And just, I told him about what happened to me and everything like that. And he goes, yeah, I had a couple other people that had kind of supernatural experiences like that. And so I was like, Oh, okay, well, great. And then, uh, he sent out, uh, you know, I was keeping track of his newsletter, and then there were some invitations going out from uh, some people, and that's how I ran into Sister Abby and Sister uh, Linda were on that list, and I um, joined their list uh, of people that were going to celebrate the feast with them. They had it at Sister uh, uh, Irma and Dan's, who also were coming out of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, or who were kind of teetering between and uh, a lot of people that were at our feast were, you know, both, you know, um, you know, kind of, kind of coming into the truth of the, the lunar Sabbath and knowing that God's calendar was a different calendar than obviously the Gregorian calendar. And uh, we, um, it, you know, again, we, uh, we were uh, practicing, all, uh, you know, the, of course, the new Sabbath, which was 
of course, difficult, right, for our work. You know, we had to be like, how are we going to bring this to our bosses? You know, both of us had pretty high-profile jobs. I traveled a lot. I worked a lot, you know, in the, and everybody's calendar is based on the, the, the Gregorian calendar. So it made, it made things difficult. My boss even wanted to fire me. In the beginning, I could tell when some you could tell when somebody's counting towards you changes, and he could see how it's going to conflict with everything. He tried to almost for a second, but then uh, he realized that there's actually laws against him doing that. Um, so that made him back off. But I could tell, you know, it wasn't the same. Obviously, after that, and and I don't and and you know, I don't I don't mind. I didn't mind giving up my job uh, because I just it didn't work. I, I look at it from not just the, my perspective, but their perspective as well. Uh, somebody needs to be there uh, for them in, in that capacity and that need, and, and I was okay with that. And you know, the, uh, because of my type of job, um, it, it would cause sh you know a certain amount of strain. And it's not just about them, uh, about our needs, but it's also about their needs as well. And so I decided that it wasn't the best fit anymore, and so that uh, we would figure out a type of ministry. Uh, and that, of course, is to come back to Yakutat and uh, spread some truth here uh, to the people in the, uh, you know, churches here and things like that. But, um, yeah, it was, a, uh, it was, it was quite, it was quite an experience. Um, I, I, in my experience, um, I've noticed uh, that there was a lot of people that came out of the Seventh-day Adventist church. And I've talked to uh, church leaders. I talked to the leader of the Free Adventist Church, which is a um, primarily uh, a black, um, uh, uh, basically, segment of the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. I don't know if anybody's familiar with them, but I actually talked with the president chair. And um, uh, he was basically the chair of the board of that church. And he was saying that people are coming out. And it's such a threat that, one of the testimonies that I got when I was there at a, a, a healing um, a medical uh, medical missionary program is that they actually were calling us lunatics uh, because we believed in the, the, moon, the Sabbath that is based off the moon. So lunatic was what we heard, and they didn't know that we were actually uh, Sabbath keepers. And so, um, you know, there's a lot you probably don't hear about yourself, you know, uh, from people in the Seventh-day Adventist Church because the only time people get really offended is obviously what you're, what you're doing and saying is actually a threat to their establishment. If you're not a threat, nobody, nobody really cares. So, but there are actually people that are leaving that church uh, and... Um, you know, because they want to follow the truth, and so uh, it's been an interesting, um, it's been an interesting uh, uh, experience. Uh, you know, um, talking to Seventh Day Adventists uh, about this uh, lunar Sabbath, and I don't know how many people. Obviously, we don't know how many people are converted because of the seeds that we plant, or sometimes it's just a part of it. But it's, uh, it's critically important that we go to Seventh-day Adventists, obviously, because if you look at a lot of the people that are worshiping and that are coming to the truth, they're following a lot of truth already as a result of their walk with the Seventh-day Adventist church. I mean, you look at how that's a, a lot, a very similar to what Jesus was uh, doing in the, in the beginning when he was um, obviously commanding his disciples to go to Israel first. Uh, before um, uh, before spreading the gospel to the entire world, and so I, I think there's a there's a parallel there, and um, I think that's why you see a large number of Seventh Day Adventists being converted and coming out of the church. Uh, I think that they were a remnant at uh, a certain point in time, uh, or I wouldn't say a part of the remnant, because obviously anybody who keeps the commandments. Um, is uh, is important uh, as as far as uh, being God's uh, God, but I just think that um, uh, well, anyways, I just yeah, that's that's pretty much my story um, in a nutshell. I tried to tell okay. the story, but it's been an interesting journey. So thanks for letting me share it. Oh, thank you, and I love your story. 
story, and um, each one of us has a story. I went through supernatural experience, too, and I thought I was going to die. And I said, I don't care what happens. I choose Jesus because I thought I was going to die in that prayer. And so um, I'm glad I chose him, and he's been in my life ever since. And I was a young lady at that time. So, And I'm so thankful for my SGA heritage. And so many people that have testified here today, uh, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you know, came out of the Sunday church and uh, going by the Bible truths, already walking in them. And uh, Ellen White has a wonderful writings and even an early writings, page 33. She says, at the commencement, at the time of trouble, we went forward to proclaim the Sabbath more fully, but nominal Adventists were very angry. So um, I like that quote. But um, for those of you that aren't from Adventist background, um, she was a great author and uh, she was even quoted by Paul Harvey quite a bit. Tanya and Daniel. Okay, hi. This is so, Reverend Daniel. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, back to uh, Barbara and, <coughs> and everyone that's here on the fellowship. Uh, I was just listening to the gentleman that preceded me. It was just, it was, a, it was fascinating because, like you, well, I had some supernatural experiences, but my journey to the Lunar Sabbath was, uh, wasn't was uh, as startling and, and as uh, as uh, dynamic as a lot of you all were. You know, in a convoluted way, I have to thank uh, Donald Trump for for, uh, <laughs> for my uh, stumbling onto this truth because he, he coined the moniker, the moniker of fake news. And I was perusing, uh, I was studying in my little study, and uh, I was I, I was a, a died in the wool, die hard seven day Saturday keeper. You know, I've only been in one church in my entire life, and you know, I stumbled into that church in my early twenties, and I thought I had found nirvana. You know, and the, and the truth to end all truths, and I believed all that, and I stumbled uh, across that. Uh, a uh, website of the world's last chance and said Saturday is the Sabbath is fake news and I and I just I was curious I thought they were going to attack my Saturday Sabbath uh, and try to justify a Sunday worship and I tuned in to that thing because I was going to you know in my mind I was going to tear them a new Torah you know <laughs> and then I, I I was surprised that they weren't talking about Sunday. And I was, you know, when I realized that, they had captured my attention. And I only had to watch it one time, and I soaked up everything, every bit of truth that they spilled out in that uh, short uh, presentation. And, you know, it was, there was no question in my mind that it was the truth, because everything that they had set forth, forth in that little presentation was was pretty much indisputable, you know. And I had read enough of the Bible to uh, to realize that, you know, once I put some of those principles about the uh, calendation into into uh, practice and my readings of the Bible, things snapped into place chronologically, and the Bible began to make sense chronologically, and you know, the feast days began to line up and all of those things that you know we always had questions about uh about you know uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection and and those dates and the high sabbath and things like that 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 would not synchronize under any other accounting uh of time just vividly came into uh into a focus you know using the chronology of the lunar sabbath system so that was the thing that really sealed the deal for me. Now, uh, unfortunately, you know, I I uh, I was so used to fellowship. You know, fellowship is something that, you know, I I I desperately need. And uh, it was very. I knew not to try to approach the congregation I was attached to with that because it was just going to sow a bunch of confusion and bad feelings. So I knew that, you know, I needed to find 
a fellowship, some place where I can continue to, you know, grow and learn with, you know, other people, like-minded people. And uh, that eluded me for a while. And, and that organization, uh, World's Last Chances, as great as its uh, accomplishments have been, they just proved a little too egalitarian for my taste. I, you know, I, I didn't, uh, I, I had to look for something that was a little more conservative, you know, because that's kind of how I am. And uh, so I was really delightful, uh, delightfully pleased to run across uh, this uh, website and this fellowship and family. And I, I've been blessed ever since. So that's that's not as exciting as some of the other uh, testimonies I've heard, but it was it was enough for me. And I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. It was good to meet you and Tanya. And um, every testimony is so important. And I, like I said, I'm very thankful for my heritage. And uh, I believe the Sabbath is called the loud cry. And we are to give the loud cry and tell others about the true Sabbath that is in the scriptures. And I know many of you have mentioned World Last Chance. Lady Gracie, Brother Troy. I mean, the message is going out, and every time I get new emails from other people, different countries and different people, uh, sometime maybe we'll read some of those letters. But, um, okay, I guess we'll go ahead and close. Um, I just want to say to access more information about the calendar and the calendar in the heavens and the Sabbath and feast days, uh, and how it was all changed and how we ended up with a Gregorian calendar, uh, please go to our website, lunarsabbathday.com. And uh, please like if this was a blessing to you and share it with your friends.